Whether you are brand new in business and you are just trying to figure out how to actually get some leverage and make some progress when you're working all by yourself as a solo entrepreneur, or whether you're further along and you're realizing your growth is literally limited by your own personal bandwidth and you can't do it all yourself, regardless of which phase you might be in, automations and delegations are going to play a huge role in your growth. So today's episode is especially for you, right? So I am here with my good friend, Julie Burke, and she has done everything from building a network marketing empire to building a massive library of online courses to now building out a full service agency. And she knows full well the roles that automation and delegation need to play in your business as you start growing and scaling. So let's jump in and dig deeper into this topic and hear from the master herself, Julie Burke. Welcome to the Impactful Entrepreneur Show with Adrian Hill, a place for online business industry expertise and thought leadership, where you can build the skills, structure, and systems you need to thrive in business and have a lasting impact in your industry. Let's do this. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another training episode. I am so excited about our interview today. I'm here with the one and only Julie Burke. She is a funnel and delegation strategist and the founder of The Freedom Designer, which is a growth and placement agency for coaches and small business owners who are ready to get their life back by implementing automation, organic social growth campaigns, and getting the right level of team support. Her clients on average say that Julie and her agency saves them 10 to 20 hours of work every week, every week, you guys, and that gives them more time freedom. So of course we had to have her here with us today. She's the perfect person to help us dig into smart strategies and automation tools and the importance of learning to delegate the right work to the right people at the right time so that you can truly build a business that you love and feel passionate about. So welcome, Julie. We're so excited that you're here with us today. Uh, Thank you so much. I just adore you. I'm very honored to be here, to be asked to be part of the summit and to help other business owners out there. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm sure pretty much everyone watching knows who you are, but just in case someone has not stumbled across you on social media yet, can you tell us just a little bit about you and your story and how you how you evolved in your entrepreneurial journey to now having this agency? Yes. So, you know, I think I've, oh, I was born with the entrepreneur spirit. My dad was an entrepreneur and I, at the age of 22, decided that I was done with corporate America and I wanted to go and build my own thing. Well, my own thing was a franchise. So I bought into a, a franchise, very young age. I had uh, three of them, got them up and running, profitable, sold them 10 years later, and literally gave birth like a month later. So I then became from like this crazy working 10 to 12 plus hours a day to then, you know, being in my home with my brand, like my little baby, which was great. But, you know, there is a part of me that felt, even though I love being a mom, I felt a bit lost. You know, I felt like, you know, as he was getting older, six months a year, like I was ready to do something again. However, I didn't want to own another franchise and I didn't want to go back to corporate. So my story was I started in direct sales. I mean, what else do you do, right? As a mom, you do the home parties and that's what I was doing. But then I found myself gone nights and weekends. And I actually like love my husband and I wanted to be home with my baby and my husband. So I literally just went back to the drawing board. I'm like, what else can I do? And that's in 2012 when I found network marketing and I learned network marketing the right way. I was always taught from day one curiosity marketing. And I quickly realized to use social media to my benefit. Now, back then, Facebook was totally different in 2012, but I was building a brand without even knowing I was building a brand, if that makes sense. I wasn't spewing my company all over the place. And so I quickly went to six figures within that company. I had a lot of success. And in 2000, and I think beginning of 2016, I felt like I was ready for the next stage. And the next stage for me was to build either, you know, it's basically a coaching business and a digital product business where I was helping other network marketers to learn how to brand themselves and to effectively like 
build relationships and do attraction marketing. Through this, I was introduced to funnels and I fell in love with the concept of automation and the fact that I could build something once and get paid for it. And so I immediately started doing funnels. I was building my organic audience. I started doing Facebook ads. I, you know, all the things. And I layered in three additional income streams into my network marketing business that all hit six figures in less than 12 months. I built a list of 42,000 people. I, it was just insane what happened and making passive revenue, passive sales was just, it was awesome. And that's the power of automation. So here I am having success. I'm doing really, really well. But then I was like living in my business because I'm a control freak at times. And I realized like that business just ran me. I basically started another job and I, I burned down that brand and actually it was right before 2020 when all the craziness happened, right? We all know what happened in 2020, but I was just finding myself working crazy amount of hours, like 12, 14 hour days, staying up till three o'clock in the morning. I was all over the place because I wanted to do everything. And then I realized that I can't do everything. So I took a step back which is okay, right? Like we take a step back. I think a lot of us took a step back to reevaluate around that time. And I'm happy to say now I've gone through everything. And, and here's the great thing. And I think that this is also the power, power of having another, you know, multiple income streams. I have my network marketing business running. So I get paid reoccurring every single month. So it allowed me the time to be able to take that step back and kind of figure things out. But I said, you know what? Like, what are you passionate about? You know, we ask ourselves these questions and I knew I wasn't passionate about getting adrenal fatigue and like giving myself up to like work, right? Like, because that's what happened. And I'm like, okay, I'm passionate. They always say that your best audience is you, but you're just steps further in the game, right? Like, and I'm like, I'm passionate about helping. I mean, I went through the good, the bad, the ugly. I, I want to help people. I want to save them time. I want to be that advisor for them, that business advisor. Like I, I want to be that mentor to be able to help them to just make decisions. Cause sometimes we sit on decisions for so long and like, we don't have clarity because we live so close to it. And, you know, you need that support and you need that guidance and you need a team and you need, you know, you need help. Like I know what business owners need, but sometimes what they want and what they need are two different things. And because again, we live so close to it. It's about me helping them to see the bigger picture, the bigger vision, get back in alignment with that and then work backwards. I mean, that's why I'm a strategist. And so I could see things before people see it. Like, I think that that's one of the gifts I have And I help them to kind of come out of their cocoon, right? And so I'm just really passionate about helping people save time. I want to condense time for people. I think the older I get, I'm going to be 45 this year. I started my online entrepreneur business. What? Oh my gosh. What was it? 30, 33, maybe 34, right? And then network marketing space. But I am not even the same person I was just a couple of years ago. I am a completely different person. I have different responsibilities. I have, my kids are older, right? Like they're busier and nothing. I don't care how much money I was making when I I burned that brand down. It was called Create Success with Julie. I burned it down. I was making about 60K a month. People would, would think I was crazy, but my time and my freedom and my family is more important important than anything else. And I, I forgot that because we get so wrapped up in our business because we, we wanted to work. And I realized I had to make some serious changes. And so now my agency is all about creating automation and delegation for other business owners. So they can de- actually design the business in the life that they love. Yeah. And that's so valuable. There's so many things I love about your story, but what I hope encourages the audience most, and you heard in her story, you guys, she started in network marketing. Then she moved into coaching and course creation. Then she moved into like 
digging deep on funnels, all the funnel stuff. Now she's all about freedom and delegation. And so she's done it all. I mean, regardless of what phase of business you're in or what of those niches you're in, Julie gets you. Like she understands she's been there. She's done that. Right. And I think regardless of what phase of business you're in or what niche in business you're in, any of us at any time can find ourselves in that place where we're overworked, we're burnt out, and we're not putting freedom at the heart of our business. I think that's what gets a lot of us started is the dream of more freedom. 100%. 100%. And suddenly you find yourself in a direction where you're like, how did I get here? This is not the freedom I wanted. So imagine the bravery to take a brand. Like she said, she was making 60,000 a month and burn it down because she realized I want freedom at the heart of my business. And not only do I need to fix it for myself, I want to fix it for other people. Yes. And I also want to give them a place where they can feel, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I understand, you know, like I get it. And, and my team that I have, like, we, we get it and we are dedicated and we want, we are client centric. I personally have worked with uh, other freelancers out there that were just out for themselves, right? Or they, they, they didn't truly understand. I, I mean, I once paid this guy for a website and he took off with my money and I'm like, I just, I can't. Right. And that is also a scary thing because we don't know people online. Like we're just, trusting them based off of human nature and good, good faith. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are not an agency that slammed through clients. We are very selective on who we work with because we want to make sure that they, they have attention, that we're taking care of them, that they're being heard and they're being seen. And again, though, you know, there's that give and take because what a business owner might feel that they need in their business at that time might not be what they really need at that time. And so (laughs) us being experts, we come in and we look at how is their business structured? Is it, are there processes? Is there automation to help free up their time? Is there something that can be taken off the plate? I'm sure there is, right? And then the flip side is because of me, again, I base it all on what I wanted my agency to look like because of what I wanted at that time. I don't want to micromanage anybody. And so they don't have to deal with eight different people. They deal with one. And that person is the account manager and takes everything back to the team. That's another thing because, you know, again, what is it free? What is freedom if now you have to go manage this? huge team and make sure that, you know, everything's getting done rather than just communicating with one person and making sure it's getting done. So, you know, I set it up smart. You know, I, I definitely, like you said, I have been through the roller coaster ride. Yeah. All those phases of business. So, and I think we're going to have some people in our audience who are a little bit more, uh, a little newer and emerging where they're, they're just working on like brand visibility and things like that. Of course. Some who are further along and they're starting to dig into creating their funnels and others who are ready to just delegate it all. So I would love to touch on each of those phases, if that's all right, um, because obviously you've lived in each of those and your clients are probably living in each of those. So for the people who are kind of new and emerging, they're trying to build more of an audience, more of a following, build their lists, build their customer bases. What are some tips you have if you're in that earlier phase and you're wanting to just get more visible with your brand? What tips do you have for for people in that phase? So if you want to get more visible with your brand, um, I believe one of the fastest ways I I was able to build my brand, and I believe a lot of people are able to do it this way. And I I know I hate to say it, I'm going to get those people, but it's video. Because showing up and listen, I'm not telling you, you have to go do a 20, 30 minute presentation. A lot of people do like short form content. A -hmm. lot of people, you know what it is? It hits all the sensory. You you got the visual, the auditory, the kinesthetic. You're hitting your audience at one time through several ways. Like, and when they hear your voice and they hear your excitement, Mm -hmm. it, it really does magnify and attract so much faster. Cause I, I, that's why I always did vlogs. 
I always put videos on all of my sales pages. I, I would do Facebook lives. Now I, I I'll be honest. I am a business owner. I am not on TikTok. I I don't even have reels on my Facebook, my personal page. I have reels on my business page. But I was able to build up my audience. I, you know, my business page has, I think, 54,000 followers, 54,000 followers from doing a Facebook Live. Like you have to find where your audience is. I know my audience is is on Facebook. And I also have a YouTube channel because a YouTube channel is outside of social, right? Google owns that. And so, you know, one of the number one things right now for you to do is build a list because you own your list and we don't own social media. Adrian knows this. It's so important, especially everything that is going on with social. Okay. Now, TikTok is not my platform. I know that I've tried it. I'm not going to beat the dead horse, right? Like don't try and make things work go where you feel your audience is and where you feel comfortable. But why I say video again is because it's the fastest way to connect with your audience and to build your brand. Hands yeah. Up. I couldn't agree more. I we've been friends for a handful of months now, but I think I I'm pretty sure I first found you in 2016 because I stumbled across a video of yours. Yeah. Oh, because I, 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 I was doing them like but like crazy. Now here's the thing. In yeah. the beginning you ramp it up a little bit more. Then as the audience starts to build, like, right, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You could go back, you could scale back a bit. It's okay because that it becomes then, I always say it's always about quality over quantity, but in the beginning, it might have to be quantity a little bit more just because you're, you're working on ramping it up. Right. But yeah, I mean, we probably did meet back then because I was doing videos like, like crazy, like crazy being authentically you. Always, please don't grab another person's voice. I know we're out there and we're seeing what everyone else is doing, but if you want to attract the right people, you have to stay true to your heart and who you are to attract the right people, right? You don't want to have a copycat business of anybody else because then you're not authentically you. And that's where you attract people to you. Yeah. And I think I remember even way back then when I stumbled across some of your videos, you were, you were very authentically you, you were just yourself. Right. And I remember thinking, Julie is my people like, you know, because you were yourself and like, we're so similar, right? Yeah. (laughs) You will attract the right people if you're just yourself. 100%. Like I did videos with no makeup. I have a little bit of makeup. I'm, I'm, I like to keep it very natural. I'm not big into the lashes or anything like that, but and they're great. I just don't have them. I, I wish I could, but I feel like they hurt my eye with my contacts. Anyways, it's a story for another day. But like people would freak out. And I'm like, I would do videos. I would do Facebook lives from my car after yoga. I was a hot stinking mess. But you know what? If I felt like the spark or I wanted to say something. And again, your lives don't have to be long. Five minutes. I mean, we didn't have stories back then. Now I love stories because stories, you're like, boom. 30 seconds, right? You might need a couple of stories, but I mean, and I will tell you so many more people see my stories than my actual lives. Sometimes like there's so many more people in stories. And so now it's even greater because you don't have to create like that long form content unless your jam is YouTube. If your jam is YouTube, then you're doing more of a 10 minute video and, you know, uploading it on YouTube, um, which YouTube is great, but that, that's, a story for another day, right? You two are totally different beasts. But um, I will always, always say it's the video. And then also having something you're leading your audience to. So you're not just leaving them there. You're sending them somewhere, some sort of call to action. Yes. So this is the perfect lead in for, I think most people realize that the worst thing you can do is attract in a massive audience and then have not like nothing to do with them. Right. You have to lead them somewhere. And that's what a funnel does. So I would love to dig into a little bit about the role that a funnel can play in your business, specifically how it can allow you to work less and make more. So do you want to dig into funnels? Yeah. I mean, funnels just magnifies your brand. I call it, you know, your branded, you can call it whatever you want. Like people know the word funnel. I know people don't like the word funnel or they don't understand the word funnel. It's basically your own branded system. It's literally the system that goes to work for you. You build it once, you don't build it. You have somebody else build it because you delegate that because you do not want to go 
and start learning funnels now. Okay. (laughs) But it's there and it literally builds the relationship for you morning, noon, night while you're sleeping, morning again, noon, night. Like it's constantly running. So we have, there's three parts to a funnel. We call it the top, the middle, and then the back end, right? Or at least I call it. So the top of funnel is that introductory point. So that's your free gift. Or Mm -hmm. some people like to do a low ticket offer, like Mm -hmm. an ebook for $12, what, what have it. I like that as I like both, but if you're doing something where it's like $7, $12, cause I've tested both. You now are creating more of a tribe of buyers list. Okay. Because they're pulling their credit card out and they're, they're, they're buying something. They're like, yeah, I I want this. Okay, cool. I want to check her out more. So that's half a funnel. And this is where they just, or it could be a webinar. It, it like it, there's so many different types of funnels. It, right? it could be something as simple as a 10 minute Facebook live that you did last week that you put onto a funnel page and you yeah. say, come watch my training. Yeah. They have to opt in. So they give they you their name in. Yes, and their email. Okay. So now they're in your world. Now they're on your email list and lo and behold, you own your email list. How cool is that? So then they get to the middle of your funnel and it could be a product, a course, a video training. I mean, it could be anything. That could be the ebook. There's again, so many different things you could do. But the thing is that this thing works like a a machine. I hate saying that, but it does. I mean, that's what it is. And that's what I loved about it when I came online. I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. And then on the back end, That's where you're creating, typically they say a five email sequence to like move the customer along. So it's the customer journey of them meeting you, moving them through, and now they're on their list. And now what do you do? You nurture them. You build a relationship. They get to know you. You invite them to other things. You invite them to come read your blog. You invite them to come watch your Facebook live training. You invite them to a masterclass. You invite them to apply for coaching. You invite them to check out your company. I mean, literally there it's like, it's the most brilliant thing ever. I love what I love so much about that, especially for the people in the audience who you've heard about funnels, but you've never set one up. Here's the magic of what Julie's talking about. If they say, yes, I'll jump on your email list to get your ebook. And yes, I'll come watch your Facebook live. And yes, I will jump into your Facebook group. And yes, I will buy your $27 offer. And yes, 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 yes. Eventually, when you ask them to become a client or a higher paying customer or join your network marketing opportunity or whatever that is, they've already said yes 10 times. They're going to say yes again. Yeah, exactly. And that's all you want. That's that's your job in the online world is having people say yes. So I'm going to, I want to go back to video real quick. You guys, when I talk about video, I should have really specifically said this. So listen up. We don't just do video because we want to do a video, right? Like nobody ever really wants to get ready to to do a video. Let's just say what it is. Okay. However, I want you to be super intentional on creating this video. Again, I'm going to say quality over quantity. So you are going to map out, and this is the cool thing about it, because when you have a funnel, you know the back end where it's leading to. So now you just reverse engineer and you just, now you know the specific content you want to talk about and with your intention, what you want to teach them. This one thing, these three top tips, you guys, I wouldn't really go over five. I feel like five's a lot. Again, we have like, these little itty, itty, itty bitty attention spans, and it's getting worse every day. And so I always tell people speak to your audience, like they're kindergartners. Like I know it sounds terrible, but we want to break. We don't want to give them the big picture. We want to break it down, give them that one thing, three things, or, you know, my five steps to, you know, getting in to losing fat without dieting or whatever it is. Like, you just want to be uber specific because by the end of this, you're going to say, Hey, I would love to hear what your favorite tip was. Also, I have a free gift for you. I want you over there now to go grab it. It will be in your inbox in less than 10 minutes. You're going to love my guide to blah, 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 blah. Awesome. Right? Like 
So you're leaving them with something and it's something they can say yes to. Yes. So that's another yes. So it's all intentional. We want to compress time. How do you compress time? By getting specific, intentional, keeping it simple, delegating and setting up automation. Like these are all the things that Adrian and I are here to teach you because they're are way too many business owners right now that are burnt out, overworked, and they're ready to throw in the towel. And I don't want to see anyone throw in the towel because I I feel in a way I kind of threw in the towel the last two years. But then in the other way, I'm like, I hung out with my kids. I took all summer off last year because of my network marketing business. I was off for Christmas the whole month. The whole month. Of, who could take eight months out of the or Who can work for eight months, take four months off, And my business actually got bigger and expanded. Like, how is that possible? If you're creating the right visibility, you're using the right funnels, and you have the right systems and delegation. Yeah. That's how. And there's a reason, you guys, there's a reason that Julie and I geek out about this stuff so much. I know. I'm like, are we? (laughs) This is the key to freedom. And this is why we, we, we wanted to bring you all here together today, because we want it for all of you. Yes. I... I'm so sad. Like I get so sad when I'm in some of these groups, these especially the women groups, and they are just like, I don't know how to get clients. I don't know how to get customers. My course isn't selling. Like they're just scrambled and then they just sit there and they do nothing. And it's like, oh well, we you know, we can help you. Yes. <laughs> this is something that we are experts in. So, and we yeah. truly want to help. Like it's yeah. in our bones to like. Once you experience it, you want it for other people. I know. My husband thinks I'm nuts because he's like, I don't, I don't get it. You do so well in network marketing. Why don't you just focus on that? Like, what is wrong with you? And you know, it's no overhead and this and that. And I'm like, yes, I know, I get it, but I'm crazy. Call me crazy. I want to help other people as well. Like, I I like to have multiple income streams, but more than that, because I could go do some other affiliate thing and, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. But I said, because I, I like, th- there's part of me, like, I have that Mother Teresa syndrome. I feel like, like I just, I want to save them. And I don't want people to give up on their dreams because mm-hmm. the online world, there's like 157 moving parts. I mean, it's, Un- see, this is the stuff that they don't tell you when you get started in the online world. And there is a way to simplify it, right? Mm-hmm. There is a way to streamline it. And there is also having the right structure to it. And then there's also that person there to say, knock that crap off. You don't need to go build another thing. Let's focus on it. Like I didn't have that. Okay. Yeah. That's why I have nine courses, Adrian, nine. And I'm, I'm kind of in that boat with you. There's this thing that happens once it clicks and you understand how funnels work and how the pieces come together. It's almost like this addiction. You finish one and you're like, let's build another one. Like yes. let's make another course. Cause you're so excited. Yeah. 92. I counted my Fire. funnels. I had 92 in there. 92, 92, <laughs> because there was all these different variations. And I, yeah, I looked at that and I, I mean, I went, oh my gosh, I can't even, I mean, there were so many, there was just, it was like baggage. There was so much I had to delete out. Which takes us to the importance of delegation. I mean, because we did not even plan this, but we didn't, but it's perfect. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) If you are finding Uh, yourself in the place that Julie and I were just talking about, where you're like kind of accidentally, but let's be honest, you're a funnel addict. Like I may or may not have been there myself. I might be there right now. Right. If you're in that place where it's clicked, you understand how it works. And now you're almost like overindulging. Oh God. Let's right? talk delegation. Okay. There's a couple of things I have to hit on a, like a psychological level because I went through this. Number one, I felt like I wasn't important enough if I didn't stay busy enough mm-hmm. or so I became the, you're so busy girl you're all over the place. And people would actually reach out to me and say, I know you are so busy, like constantly. Yeah. Like I am busy, but what am I busy doing? You had a story in your mind that was keeping you there. Yeah. I had to let go of the story because I didn't, I felt like 
what do I do with my time if my kids are at school and I'm not busy? Well, you know what? I go and get a massage or I go grocery shopping or I am now back into my fitness. I gave up my fitness for a year because I was slamming in this office and creating all this stuff. Now I work out like I get to design my day. I don't have to rush. I can breathe. I could go take a hot yoga class. Like, and I felt like for the longest time that you're only successful if you're busy. That was the story I literally told myself because I don't have to be that way. No, because I would see these successful people that I felt like they're always busy. Listen, that's a fallacy. So we got to let that go like ASAP. And so when I realized that, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to feel this way anymore. Like, mm-hmm. It's not for me. And how do you scale if you're constantly living in your business? Like you can't, you just cannot, it's impossible. It's literally impossible. You reach a point in your business where the only way you can grow is to work yourself out of your own business. Yeah. So you know what I did? I set up a business where I delegate and I delegate to help other people's businesses. So yeah. I'm not the one building everything. I am the visionary. I am the CEO. I am the strategist. But now I have a business that can run without me and knowing that clients are being taken care of from the people that are the experts in copywriting, in social growth, in getting people clients, we call them setters, that can set up all the automation, all the funnels, all the every, like, I didn't have to go learn that. I now have a business that can offer that to people and I'm still leveraged. Yeah. Right? And so for the viewers watching, whether you're in that funnel addict phase or whether you're approaching the funnel phase and you're realizing, I don't want to become an addict. I don't want to go. I don't want to get overworked. You can work with someone like Julie from the very beginning. Right. And have the right people delegated to the right tasks. So you're not killing yourself. At the right time. At the right time. Because there needs to be systems and structure and processes set in place in your business if you ever want to get to the point where you are free and you can scale and you don't have to live in that business. Like it's the recipe for success. It truly is. It really is. So now for those watching, like I said, we may have some who are more in the beginner phases and some who are in the ending phases where they're really needing that delegation. And I know you have some gifts that could help regardless of where people are in their business from start to finish. So there's a free gift for those who might be more kind of newer and emerging in business. Do you want to tell us about that one? Yes, it is my visibility guide for female entrepreneurs, how to get more visible now. Um, And that is, it's just a great quick, like cheat sheet of like the top 10 things you really want to be focused on right now. Do you want me to share the link or are you going to put the link? There'll be a button okay. somewhere just above or below this video. So look yeah. for the button, everyone. There, it'll be easy for Click you. Click the button. <laughs> Click the button. And now for those who are VIP ticket holders who have lifetime access to all this training and some extra fun bonuses, I know that you have a VIP bonus. You want to tell us about that one? Yeah. So the VIP bonus is an actual strategy call with me to see if myself and my agency can help you, what we can take off your plate, how we can help you grow, how we can help you systematize, how we can help you get some more time and freedom back into your life. I will be giving away a couple of those calls free of charge. So I'm very happy. Of course, no matter how far along in business you are um, from start to finish, Julie's got your back. Yeah, we so, can see like a roadmap, you know, because yeah. sometimes it's like what people need is they need clarity because they can't see it because they're so overworked or foggy. And so it's like, you know, we could hop on a call. We could talk about where you're at right now, where you want to go. I could help you to even realign with that vision. And then we could create a, a roadmap because that's what I'm really good at. And that's going to get you to where you want to be in your goals. I love it. What an abundant gift. Thank you so much, Julie, for helping us cover everything really from start to finish A to Z, how to nail it online. And from someone who's kind of been there, done that in almost every niche possible. Yeah, I have that. been. Oh my goodness. I have been a little <laughs> well, bit too much. I like to admit. My best yes. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, for those of you in the audience watching, you are going to be able to interact with Julie live in the Facebook group. You can talk to her. 
right? And ask your questions. If there was any question you had that I didn't happen to ask and you want to dig deeper, join us in there. It's all, all the information's in your emails. It's in the Facebook group. Jump in and meet us there with Julie. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. You've been listening to the Impactful Entrepreneurs Show with Adrian Hill, where we support coaches, course creators, and network and affiliate marketers to translate their big picture vision into actionable plans to build out their business efficiently. If you love our show, we invite you to visit buildalifebydesign.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover more helpful resources. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, and share. Thank you for listening.